would you look at all this stuff? Absolutely amazing stuff. And for a nerd like me, I geek out when I look at this stuff because I see all sorts of really cool engineering design and capability in front of me. We're going to have a pretty cool conversation about what all of this stuff is and the differences between them. Because when you are shopping for a new suspension for your RV or trailer, you have a lot of questions, right? You want to know, do I go with one system over another and what makes one better or different than another? So we have them all laid out in front of us today and uh, we're going to go over them. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so in front of me, I have one half of all of them laid out. So let's talk about some of the things that you're looking at in front of you. Again, all of these are designed to be used with a traditional leaf sprung suspension system. What is a leaf sprung suspension system? Well, it is a system that has either one or two or three axles that uses these as your form of suspension. A leaf spring is very, very common on a lot of vehicles. There's even older cars that have leaf springs. But really in modern vehicles, you pretty much only see leaf springs on pickup trucks and SUVs. And not even all SUVs anymore. A lot of them have switched to a coil spring, which I think that's pretty self-explanatory what a coil spring is. But this is a leaf spring. You have two eyelets, one on each side. And typically on an RV, they're going to have these little nylon bushings pressed into them. So these little bushings right here wear out relatively quickly, but this is pretty much what you're going to see standard on most travel trailers, most RVs, a leaf sprung type suspension. Now, most of them will probably be much larger than these. I got these small leaf springs just for illustration purposes, but let me show you another type of leaf spring that you may see on some trailers, typically not RVs, but there is a suspension system that does utilize these for RVs. And that is a slipper spring system. So you have an eyelet on one side, and on the other side you have this kind of a curve piece. And there's typically going to be bolts that hold this to a bracket, and this piece will slide up and down like this as the suspension is compressed. And that's called a slipper spring. So that's what you're looking at right here. Again, this is very, very common on utility trailers, maybe some cargo trailers, on dump trailers, things like that. Slipper springs have been around for a long time. There are some companies that are making a suspension replacement system for traditional leaf springs on trailers and switching them to slipper springs. I don't necessarily know if I agree with that because I don't see a true benefit between one versus the other. I think they both accomplish what they're designed to do relatively well. And like I said, on your cheaper utility trailers, maybe your heavier duty dump trailers, things like that, you're going to see slipper springs kind of being your predominant spring system. And then you're going to see dual eyelet springs like this being predominantly on RVs. Okay, so now that we know that all of these systems, including the Sumo Springs right here, are designed to work with a leaf sprung suspension, let's go through these different types of suspension equalizers and see what they're all about. Now, all of these are suspension components. They're designed to be used on the suspension of your RV. But a non-suspension equalizer simply means a standard equalizer that doesn't utilize any type of additional spring or dampening built into it. So this is the standard equalizer that you may see on a lot of trailers. A lot of trailers that come off of dealership lots, they will come equipped with this type of equalizer. Non-suspension, typically will have a grease circ at the top so you can at least grease it. This type of system um, is not what I would consider to be unreliable or bad. It just does not provide any additional shock dampening to the interior of your RV, which is really important when you're talking about an RV that has a lot of wood, a lot of nails, a lot of glue, and a lot of things that you put inside of the RV, like glasses, plates, silverware, appliances, things that can be jostled around, or just the vibration and road shock can cause them to fall over and make a mess or break. So again, this is traditionally what you're going to see on most of your entry-level travel trailers. Even some higher-end travel trailers will have this. Most of your entry to mid-level fifth wheels and a lot of conventional trailers like your cargo trailers and your small utility trailers. This has been around for a long time. Again, there's nothing truly wrong with the design. These things are pretty dang robust and tough, especially if you get one from Dexter. Um, but just understand that this technology right here does not allow for any additional shock dampening from the road to the interior of your RV. Now, a couple things to note about this is this is just one example of an equalizer. There are all sorts of other types of equalizers that look like this, but they might be much longer, they might be much bigger, they might be much taller. Depending on the axle setup, depending on the RV setup, 
This could vary from RV to RV or trailer to trailer. But this is just an example of a non-suspension equalizer that you would see on an RV. It hangs right here from your center equalizer hanger that go right here and these connect to your leaf springs so your leaf springs shoot off of here and this rocks back and forth like this depending on the angle of the rv what you're going over and it equalizes the load or tries to equalize the load across the axles as best possible but again very basic system right here this is typically the shackle strap you'll see and it goes to this and it will typically have a standard bolt that goes through here nothing special about the bolt except it's kind of like a self-locking bolt and i'll explain more about that here in a second but again that is your standard setup now everything else you see across here is a suspension equalizer they're designed to mitigate and reduce shock and vibration from transferring as much to the interior of your rv when you're going over bumps so let's talk about some other components before we go further. So the name of this right here is actually called a shackle strap. A shackle strap is simply a flat piece of steel that has two holes in it. This is again designed to connect your equalizer to your leaf spring. And these right here absorb a lot of road vibration, a lot of shock and abuse. And these are typically a failure point. This is probably your first failure point on most RVs um, because one of these can break relatively easy. So the thickness of this material right here is only about 8.58 millimeters thick. The thickness of the shackle strap itself is about 5 millimeters thick. So these are, again, very, very important. If one of these fails, your suspension fails. So if you have tandem axles, dual axles on your RV, you have eight of these. Um, you're going to have major issues if just one of these shackle hangers breaks. And that's a lot riding on something that's relatively thin relatively lightweight and has some areas of steel here that if they deform or fail can leave you stranded on the side of the road. So a lot of manufacturers have produced a heavy duty shackle strap. Here's a couple examples. So this one right here is made by Dexter and this one which is significantly thicker you can just tell by looking at it. I mean shoot if we just compare the two together right here all right it's over it, it actually looks to be almost three times as thick as this one but you can just see how much stronger it is, how much more material there is in this specific hanger. So if we take the measurements of this one, we can see that this distance right here is 11.25 millimeters thick. And the overall thickness is 12.7 or actually 12 and a half millimeters. So this thing is significantly more robust. It is much heavier. It's got far more material in all the, in all the important areas. You can see if I just line up the holes here. I mean, everything about it is more robust than your standard shackle hanger. Check that out. This is the reason why I talk about heavy-duty shackle straps and greasable wet bolts. Because you want something like this that is supporting the weight of your RV that has a far lower likelihood of failing than something like that. Now, there's another brand. There's actually several brands that make these. Lippert makes them, but Moride also makes them. And the Moride bracket in my opinion, is actually built a little better than the Dexter. Um, same thickness, so they're both pretty much exactly the same thickness. Um, the same clearances in many areas, but you can see just the machining of the Moride piece is larger, and you can see there's more material here in the corners. Not a heck of a lot more, but there is more material. Do I think one is truly better than the other? Not really. I think they're both probably perfectly great upgrades to your RV suspension. I don't think if you picked one over the other, you would be getting a superior product. But what I can tell you, if you do care about the cosmetics, if you care about the machining, the, uh, the Moride bracket definitely looks like it's machined better. It looks like there was more time that went into making this part, for sure. Uh, but the Dexter product is a perfectly fine product. It's just a little bit more rough on the edges. But those are the two. Now, I know one looks like it might be a little bit bigger. And if you look at the Dexter, it's a little thicker right here. Or a little taller. I don't know what dimension you want to call that. But I can put it here in the end and you can see what I'm talking about. Just a hair. Not much. Maybe a millimeter. But everything else is pretty much the same. So either product is a really good product, and I'm not going to knock one over the other. Now, an advantage I will give to Dexter over Moride is the fact that a lot of their suspension kits include this setup. So even this cheap hanger right here actually comes with this setup. It comes with the heavy-duty shackle straps as well as greasable wet bolts. So a greasable wet bolt is essentially a bolt that these are already pressed into one side of the hanger so you don't have to do it. 
but they have a hole in the center here, which is fed by this grease zerk. So you put grease in and it feeds grease into this area. And then you have these brass bushings that are constantly greased. Whenever you put grease into this zerk, it fills the void here and it gives you a greasable area that is far, far longer lasting than these nylon bushings that you typically get as standard on most RVs. Now, a lot of RVs are starting to come with this type of a setup, one of these. Uh, and I've been pushing for that. I think every RV, every single RV that has two axles or more should have a suspension equalizer. If you only have one single axle, well, you're not going to have an equalizer, period. You're just going to have shackle hangers that connect to each end. Every conversation I have with a trailer manufacturer, I talk about the fact that if they don't have a suspension equalizer, they need to add one. Alliance is a good example of that with the Delta series. They do great putting suspension equalization on their fifth wheels. They actually use the Cree 3000, but they don't put suspension equalizers on their travel trailers. And I truly believe they need to go with maybe the Cree 3000, a Dexter Easy Flex. It doesn't matter to me. Just put a system on your trailer. That's all I care about. And I think every manufacturer should do that, even Forest River Surveyor, the collaboration unit that I have. So we're going to pick one of these to eventually put on the trailer, but that's just my little rant on suspension for RV manufacturers. Okay, so next we're moving on to suspension equalizers. Again, all of these are a form of suspension component, but this is a standard equalizer, right? Just basically a solid piece of steel, whereas all of these are suspension equalizers because they utilize some form of shock dampening and shock absorption built into them. Now, as we move along here, you're going to notice one thing that's recurring about all of them, and that's the fact that they use rubber as the means for shock absorption. And rubber will probably last just as long as any other component you could use, whether it be like a coil spring or some other type of, of spring system in here. But the fact is that everyone's using rubber. So I guess as they become more advanced in terms of how they're building these compounds and what they're designed to do, you probably have to worry less about them failing as soon, but just something to keep in mind. Now we're going to start from the left and work our way to the right. So again, another Dexter component here. This is the Dexter Easy Flex. I actually like this product. I think this is a pretty dang robust, super reliable product. The challenge with it, in my opinion, is that it does not have a heck of a lot of suspension built into it because this rubber block right here is a super, super firm rubber block. And how does this suspension system work? So again, you have your shackle straps right here that go in like that. I know I'm mixing brands here, but they go in like that. Then they connect your leaf springs on both sides. But the way this system works essentially is your pivot points right here. You have two grease zerks that grease that pivot point. And then this compresses as the suspension moves. So you can see this pivot point right here, when this suspension goes up, this is going to go like that. When this suspension goes up, this is going to go like, well, this one will go like that. So they squeeze this bushing. They squeeze, expand, and contract that bushing depending on what type of terrain you're going over. And again, this bushing is super super hard material. All of these compounds are pretty dang hard, but I think the Easy Flex definitely has the most firmness to it. It's definitely the hardest to move, hardest to articulate, hardest to, to compress whenever you're using it. I don't think it's a bad system, but I think from a shock absorption perspective, it seems to me as if this one would probably reduce the least amount of shock because of the design. That said though, it's probably the most robust in terms of overall build. Um, I can see how this thing can last a long time, and they give you like a five-year warranty on their part. So I could definitely see how this component probably would never fail, and this rubber over time might become softer and softer and add more suspension characteristics. What I like about all of these, though, is the fact that they use brass bushings already pre-fit and pressed into these spots, so you don't have to worry about pressing a bushing in. They're already pressed in even... The basic Dexter equalizer has brass bushings already pressed into it, so that is really nice. But this is the Easy Flex. Again, out of all of these, I would venture to say this one has the least amount of suspension movement and compression and dampening um, out of all of them. Next, we're going to talk about the Cree 3000. So the Cree 3000 is very, very popular on a lot of RVs. This actually comes standard on a lot of Alliance products. It comes standard on a lot of Grand Design products. This is a very, very, very common upgraded suspension equalizer that you'll even see on a lot of large toy haulers, like triple axle toy haulers. And the way this works is you have this center pivot point 
but then this portion right here, because of this groove, can slide up and down. And that suspension characteristic is enhanced by this rubber bushing right here. So this rubber bushing compresses as you go over bumps. So if you're going over rough terrain, not only can this rock side to side, and you get the suspension characteristics of that compressing in that manner, but you also have travel because this can travel up and down as well. So you have quite a bit of travel. They say like three inches of travel, but the thing you have to keep in mind here is that you can't just look at this groove right here because this can also rock up. So this can rock up and pivot quite a ways on either side, and that's going to give you additional travel space. So yeah, I think three inches probably makes a lot of sense in terms of, you know, advertised versus reality from a travel perspective. But this is the, the Cree 3000. Very good system. It works really well. I hear very few people complain about this system or how it works, and it's very serviceable as well. But you essentially remove this bolt right here. This entire piece comes out. You can replace the rubber bushing. You can replace the nylon bushing right here, and you can service the entire unit. So this is really nice. This piece up here is incredibly robust. More I definitely overbuilds a lot of their products, and this is an example of that. Very, very popular suspension system, uh, very, very functional, and there's a reason why a lot of manufacturers use this as their primary upgrade. I do like this product. Next, we're going to take a look at the Alltrek from Moride. So this is a relatively new product on the market. This is the Alltrek 4000, four inches of suspension travel. So that's kind of crazy, isn't it? It's very similar to the Cree 3000, but you can definitely tell it is a longer travel system. There's no doubt about that. You can see the distance from your eyelet to the top center hanger is much, much greater than the Moride 3000. So you're going to have to be very careful whenever you're looking at spacing and clearance to upgrade to this. You're going to want to utilize their, uh, their chart that actually gives you all the different measurements and all the things you need to do to ensure this will fit. I originally wanted to put this on the surveyor, but I don't think it'll fit because the, the distances and everything just won't work out for that specific travel trailer. That said, it's very similar in terms of how it's designed compared to the Cree 3000, except a lot more travel. Take a look at this rubber bushing right here. It's massive compared to that rubber bushing, right? And again, you can just see how much more travel there is there. And instead of kind of splitting the distance between the slot on the Cree 3000 down here and the pivot point right there, this one has a much, much deeper slot right here. This looks like it's all of maybe three inches worth of movement right here. And this one doesn't look like it actually rocks on a center pivot right here. This one just slides up and down, and your pivot is going to be your actual hanger for your suspension up here because both of these bolts look like they thread through here, and that's actually what this slides straight up and down on. So it's basically going to move up and down and pivot like this on its hanger. A little bit different design than the Cree 3000, right? The Cree 3000 has some pivoting capability right here. It can pivot around this bolt slightly and rock, whereas... The center right here gives you additional pivot capability, and then you have your two eyelets right there. Very, very uh, unique setup. This right here is definitely an upgrade if you want a lot more suspension travel. You would definitely want to pair this with like their bracing system that they have for your shackle hanger. Um, basically because this sticks down so much further, it's going to put more leverage on those hangers, and they make a cross brace a brace that goes across the center to connect the two hangers together to stiffen that area up and make it more robust and less likely to fail or deflect. And again, your shackle straps right here would go through right here, attached to your leaf springs, and that's how you would connect this entire assembly. Again, all brass bushings, very nice, very easy to service. If you can get to this, you take it off, take the center bolt out right here, drop your two bolts out right here, and some of this, you don't probably have to do that. You can probably just take your leaf springs off here to service it. You unbolt this, this whole assembly comes out, replace the rubber bushing, put the assembly back together, and you're good to go. Okay, so next, we're going to take a look at the two Lippert products here. We have both Road Armor, which is their newer product, and we have the Equiflex, which is a product that's been around for some time. So after examining the Equiflex system, I have a lot more respect for this system than I had before. I never really had a chance to take a close look at what this system is all about. And now that I've actually seen one and I'm holding it and I've been able to explore it, I can tell you that I really like the design of the Equiflex. And I can see why this has been around for so long, but I can also see why this might have some components that wear out a little bit quicker than some of the others. Let me show you why. So first of all, um, it looks very similar to the Cree 3000, right? You got this rubber bushing on top. And 
basically it looks like this is a pivot point on the bottom and this bolt right here holds this rubber bushing in place. So if you want to take it apart, you pop this out, this bottom piece comes off and then you have this rubber bushing that can pop out if you remove this bolt right here. Very well built, nice and robust. The, the fit and finish on this is actually really, really nice. But something I did not know about this system is that each one of these can move independently of each other. So that's very similar in a way to how the Dexter system works, where each side, each eyelet can move independently of each other. If you look at all of these other systems, this is one solid piece of steel. Right here, one solid piece of steel. And even on this one, that's one solid piece of steel that runs through there. But on this one, check it out it actually gives you independent movement capability. So these can squeeze in and out and they can move independently of each other if they need to. Now you're not gonna get a lot of travel because your limitation's gonna be about three quarters of an inch here and about three quarters of an inch here, but you will have the rocking capability, but I'm pretty dang impressed with the design of this because by splitting this up, it really changes the dynamics of how this can absorb suspension because, again, it almost makes it a form of independent suspension because this bushing right here is exclusive for this specific side, and this bushing right here is exclusive for this specific side. So that's pretty cool. Um, this kind of blows me away. I did not realize the Equiflex was as engineered as it is in terms of what it's designed to do and how it's designed to do it. If this was one solid piece of steel right here, then it would be very similar to some of the others. And that's what I thought it was. I thought this whole thing rocked as one unit together. I did not realize that each one of these can compress independently of each other and they can rock independently. Now, you're not going to have much downward movement because that will force the other one to move. But when you have weight on this, these are going to compress in slightly and they'll use each side to compress independently against the uh, actual shackle hanger. That is really cool. I Again, did not expect to see that when I was looking at the Equiflex product. That uh, that kind of blows my mind away. So I have a whole new respect for Equiflex. I do think they could probably make an evolutionary change to this that gives you a little bit more travel, but that is a very, very cool design. And then finally, let's talk about the Road Armor suspension system. So if you don't know, Lippert makes a trail air, and this is the Road Armor trail air suspension system. Relatively new on the market, pretty large. It's not quite as tall as the Alltrek 4000, but this is a really, really cool suspension system. Um, it's highly serviceable because you can take two bolts out, you can drop this, you can remove and replace that bushing, and you take this bolt out, this portion, I don't know if it'll just slip right out. I don't know if there's a groove in there to allow that to happen. There probably is, because I could see them making it serviceable so you could get this top bushing out. But this is the road armor system, and the way this works is you have a center pivot point, which you can see right here. This piece can rock like this, and you have top and bottom rubber compression springs. So if it rocks this way, it'll be pressing in on this one and this one. If it rocks this way, it'll be pressing in on this one and this one. So kind of a four-way suspension deal here. Um, I like this design. I do. It's similar to all the others where it uses kind of a single piece of steel as that pivoting as that pivoting piece. The Alltrek does not pivot. It just slides up and down, whereas the Cree 3000 does pivot. And the Equiflex right here doesn't need to pivot because it has individual pivot points right here for each one of these, which is super cool. Again, I really have a new respect for the Equiflex system. That's pretty awesome. Um, but the Road Armor system is what we've been using for a while. I really like it. Again, you get four points of contact, and then you get the top as well that's going to move like this. Very good systems. They all are super functional. So the last thing I want you to think about here is that all of these are better than just running this with your leaf springs by themselves. These systems all provide some form of dampening, which are going to mitigate some of that shock and harshness from traveling to the frame and chassis of your RV from the road, which is great. When you couple them with heavy-duty shackle straps, greasable wet bolts from Moride, from Dexter, from Lippert, you're definitely making a system that is far more robust and far more reliable than running these. All right, so replacing your suspension components with heavier duty components definitely is something that I always recommend doing. What we have on our Brookstone is the road armor setup with the greasable wet bolts, heavy duty shackle straps from Lippert because it was all part of the Lippert package. And we have the Sumo Springs. So it doesn't have to be the Lippert product. Um, Moride makes a fantastic product lot more movement. You get a lot more suspension movement with these. Um, so you get more articulation, which can really be helpful. But 
These are seriously good upgrades. Uh, they're not super expensive upgrades. You can typically do all of it for about under a grand, is what I would say, um, and have a system that you can trust. Couple that with really good quality tires, and I think you'll be in really good shape. Anyways, guys, I got to give a huge shout out to my channel sponsor, eTrailer.com. Without them, I could not have made this video. So big shout out to them. Super cool. They carry all of these components. This is all stuff that was provided to me for review and evaluation by eTrailer. I'm going to pick out one of these kits to put on the surveyor. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.